Hey everyone, this is Sarah from Black Note Transcriptions. Today we're gonna to talk about 14 tips to improve your practice routine. So as a musician, you have practiced a lot. You've put in a lot of hours perfecting your craft. And sometimes those hours are well spent, sometimes they are kind of wasted and we've all been guilty of this. We go into the practice room and we kind of goof off for a little bit or we're not really sure what to do or we just get bored and start doing things that we know aren't really on our list of priorities. So follow these 14 tips and hopefully your practice routine will be revamped with new life and you'll start to be seeing results. Tip number one is to set clear goals. When you enter the practice room, you need to have clear goals of what you are going to accomplish that day. If you walk into the practice room and you just have the goal of playing, that's all that's gonna happen. Set clear goals, set long-term goals, break them down into smaller chunks, and know what you need to accomplish every single day in order to reach those goals. If you don't have goals, sometimes practicing can feel kind of pointless or <laughs> meaningless or directionless. So make sure that you are having something that you're working towards, you have some goal that you want to achieve, and your practice routine will have a lot more purpose and you'll get a lot more done. Tip number two, warm up. Make sure that you're incorporating a warm up into your practice routine and make sure you warm up, especially before rehearsals and performances. Now, warm ups can come in all different varieties, but make sure that the warm up that you choose is safe, it's effective, and it's at your skill level. If you are warming up with exercises that are way beyond your skill level, it's not gonna help you. In fact, it could end up hurting you. So make sure that you are doing warm-ups that are appropriate for where you're at. Make sure they start very, very comfortably and then expand as your warm-up goes on. So when you're warming up, try to avoid extremes. So make sure that you're not playing extremely fast or extremely loud or extremely technically. Start from the basics, start from the core of your skills. So personally, as a brass musician, I always start with what is most comfortable. I start with some long tones right in the middle of my range, not too loud, not too quietly, but I'm starting in a very comfortable place. So as the warm up progresses, I can expand in range, I can expand in volumes, I can expand in speed and in technicalities, but I'm not starting in any crazy place. Make sure that your warm-up fits your instrument and it fits your skill. Warming up is so important because it gets you physically and mentally prepared to make music. If you're feeling stuck, there are a lot of warm-ups that don't have anything to do with you playing your instrument. For example, a lot of instrumentalists will do some stretching before they play, or a lot of people will do breathing exercises, or maybe some non-vocalists will try singing or humming just to kind of wake up their ears. There are a lot of things you can do to get yourself prepared physically, mentally, and emotionally for making music. And they don't all have to do with just making sound for your instrument. So take that into account next time you're feeling stuck or maybe you're looking for new creative ways to spice up your warm-up routine. Tip number three, eliminate distractions. Distractions are everywhere. They are constant. If you have a phone, you know what it's like for your phone to be always buzzing and going off and you're always wanting to check it. It is a problem. And the only way to eliminate it is to just eliminate it. So if, if this is something that is really weighing down your practice routine, if you're finding yourself getting very, very distracted, just put your electronics away, turn them off, put them in your instrument case, tell yourself that you cannot check your phone, you cannot check your texts, until you've practiced for an hour and then you'll give yourself a 10 minute water break, bathroom break, whatever. Give yourself a set time when you can look at that device again. But try to make your practice area an electronic free, a distraction free zone. If you're finding yourself getting very easily distracted by friends barging into your practice room or distracted by your insecurities of practicing comfortably in an area where others might hear you, You'll, you'll need to just find a way to work through that. I encourage you to not be afraid to make really loud mistakes while you're practicing. We all make them. It's how we grow. It's how we learn. And the more mistakes you make when you're in that scenario, when you are feeling self-conscious, um, the quicker you'll get over it. And that's really important to be comfortable making strange noises and making mistakes. 
So just try to power through that insecurity and it, it will get better, I promise. Tip number four, record yourself. This tip is so helpful for any musician. Every musician everywhere can benefit from recording a practice routine, a performance, and listening back to it. There are a lot of things that you might not be hearing while you're playing your instrument or singing that you will hear in the recording. Keep in mind, though, that you are almost always your own worst critic. So you will hear every single tiny flaw in your sound, and it might be really, really depressing. Um, it's okay. You don't sound as bad as you think you do, but keep in mind that the recordings do not lie, unless you're recording with like a terrible mic in a terrible setting, but don't do that. The recordings do not lie, and what you are hearing is what everyone else is hearing. So this is a very humbling experience, but it's so necessary if you want to improve and if you want to really have an objective ear about the way you sound. Tip number five, use a pencil. This piece of advice is so old and we've heard it all our lives in every classroom scenario, but it's so true. Use a pencil, mark your music, it's okay. If you're making a mistake, be sure to give yourself some kind of visual cue so that you don't make that mistake again. Do not waste your practice time learning bad habits. Do not waste your practice time learning the wrong music. Use a pencil, write in your music, and do it right. Tip number six, listen more. Listen to more music. Find music that inspires you. Find professional musicians who play your instrument the way that you want to sound and listen to those musicians all the time. Sometimes a great thing to do to break up your practice routine is to take a five minute break and listen to a piece of music that you love. Listen to a really inspiring, gorgeous sound of the instrument that you play. Listening more can help you internalize a sound that you're trying to recreate. And if you don't have a goal sound really internalized, it will be harder to recreate that gorgeous, amazing sound. So make sure that you have goal recordings and goal performers that you look up to. The more often you practice with an ideal sound in mind, the more often you will be creating that sound and having more efficient practice sessions. Tip number seven, sing. Make sure you are singing every single day. This applies to all musicians, not just vocalists, instrumentalists. You need to be singing your music every day. When you're looking at your music, can you sing it? Can you hear all the notes on the page? Next time that you're practicing, take a break from your instrument and see if you can actually hit all of the notes in your music. This doesn't mean that you need to be some virtuosic singer and be able to sing super high and super low and all these trills and arpeggios, but generally, you should be able to hit the, the right pitches. You don't need to sound good, but generally you should be able to match the pitches of the notes that you're playing in your music. You might be singing in a different octave, but whatever. If you can't, sing the notes, chances are you're not really able to hear what you're playing. You're not hearing the music on the page. You might just be reacting because you've learned to sight read with your fingers. You see a note on the page, your fingers do this. You might have learned to read music that way. And if you cannot hear the music on the page, that's probably the case. So if you are unable to sing your music, take it really, really slow. Sing just one or two measures of your music very slowly until you can sing it accurately. Once you can sing it accurately, speed it up. Play it on your instrument at that same speed. So make sure you're spending just a little bit of time every day singing your music. Practice tip number eight, take breaks. Give yourself a break. Do not practice for six hours straight without getting a break for water or a snack or just getting outside and taking in the fresh air. You need to take breaks for your mental health and your physical health, so just do it. Give yourself that freedom. It's so cool if you are super, super strict with yourself and you have an, an insanely amazing work ethic and you're like, no, I need to practice for nine straight hours. I respect that. But you need to respect yourself enough to just give yourself a break every now and then. It's not lazy and it's not bad practice. Give yourself a break, clear your mind, refresh and get back in the practice room. Tip number nine, sight read. Make sure that you are sight reading something every single day. If you hate sight reading, you're probably not very good at it. 
I'm just being honest, generally we tend to dislike the things that we are not good at yet. So if you hate sight reading, that's a sign that you probably need to be doing it more every single day. So find some music that is appropriate for your skill level of sight reading, grab a partner if you want to, read some duets, and just have fun with it. Sight reading should not be really stressful. If it is, you're probably reading at a level that is a little bit too difficult for you at this time. So find some music that is appropriate for your level of sight reading and start reading every day. Sight reading can also just be a great way to break up your same old monotonous practice routine. If you're starting to get bored with the same old practice routine, take 10 minutes and sight read. It's really fun and it will help wake up your brain and get you ready for what's next. Tip number 10, use multiple approaches. It can be so easy to look at our problems and use the same solution for every single problem. Don't do that. I'm sure that you have a lot of tools and a lot of knowledge from various teachers and various experiences that you have had, and you can take all of that information and use it to teach yourself. So if you're struggling, imagine that you're teaching a six-year-old. If a six-year-old was struggling with something on their instrument, you wouldn't just use the same approach to fix all of their problems. No, you would try some new things. You would experiment, you'd get creative, you'd tell them a little story or play a little game with them to reach their goal. Do that with yourself. Give yourself a game to play. I love to compete with myself. Sometimes I'll set a timer and see how many times I can do this thing perfectly in five minutes. Or I will find other ways to compete with myself. I'll keep a journal and see if I did better this week than I did last week. Do things to motivate yourself that are different and use different approaches to all of your problems. Let's go back to that six-year-old kid that you're teaching. If they got frustrated, you wouldn't just give up on them, would you? Of course not. So don't do that to yourself. If you find yourself getting really frustrated with a problem, don't just put your instrument down and think, I suck, I can't do this. Find a new way. Pretend that you are that six-year-old and you need to be taught. So have patience with yourself, give yourself some credit, and just be creative with the way that you solve your own problems. I guarantee you have a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience that can help inform some new creative ways to teach. And who knows, you might realize that you have a lot of innovative ideas and maybe teaching is something that you would love to do. Tip number 11, don't be afraid to ask for help. If you need help, find it. Pretty much every musician ever is in support of each other. Every musician wants to help you. If you are struggling, ask a friend for help. Find a teacher, ask a colleague, go on the internet, email me, look at other YouTube videos, go on Reddit, do whatever you need to do. There are so many people out there who want to help you. So many musicians out there have such a wide range of knowledge and experiences and all of those musicians are ready to help you improve. We all want to see each other grow and succeed. So if you are struggling, if you are unmotivated, if you just have one problem that you need to be solved, find help. There's no shame in that. Tip number 12, mix it up. Make sure that you are being creative in your practice routine and that you are giving yourself some kind of variety there is nothing worse than doing something every single day if it's boring and you hate it. <laughs> of course, I'm a big supporter of routines and of consistency, but if you hate what you're doing and if it is just boring you to death, mix it up, be creative, throw on some sight reading on this day, throw on some singing on this day, write a song on this day, play some games, do what you need to do to have fun with your practice routine. Because in the end, that is the most important thing. Are you having fun while you practice or does it suck? Tip number 13, be consistent. I know I just told you to mix it up, but mix it up consistently. Make sure you have a fundamental base of the things you do every single day and then mix it up with a little bit of fun stuff here and there. You have to be consistent with your practice. It will make you stronger as a musician and if you really stick to a routine every single day, think of how incredibly strong your work ethic will be. And lastly, tip number 14, don't be so hard on yourself. Practicing can be so draining. Being a musician can be so draining, right? I mean, it's exhausting, it's competitive, it's hard, but don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing 
just fine. If you're consistent, if you have your goals, if you're sticking to those goals, if you're doing things every day to reach those goals, you're gonna be fine. You might be slower than somebody else or faster than somebody else. That's just the way it is. Find ways to optimize your time, be as efficient as possible, and do the things that you know are going to work for you. This will take experimentation, it will take a lot of failure, but in the end, you will find that your practicing is much more successful, you're making much better use of your time, and you're enjoying it a lot more. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, please do so by clicking the red subscribe button. And if you want to receive notifications about every time we post a video, you can click on the little bell. If you'd like to see more of our content, read our blog, check out our premium transcription, arranging, engraving, reduction services, please visit our website at blacknotetranscriptions.com.